Peace. We are here today with Professor David A. Mason and we are going to show you the sequences of our shamanistic lecture today. So David, can you just give us a short brief? What are we going to expect here today with this lecture? Sure. Today we're going to introduce shamanism, what it really is, what's going on within uh, shaman ceremonies and the practice of it. We're going to cover the history of how shamanism manifested here in Korea and what is particularly characteristically Korean about it and show some photos especially of the mountain spirit and introduce that figure and the important role that the mountain figure plays within Korean culture and the astounding variety of mountain spirit artworks that are available to see. Thank you! Now check it out what we are going to show you. So again, hello and uh, welcome to our very first lecture of uh, Hippie Korea Community Lecture Series 2015. And so today we are starting with the introduction of uh, Korean shamanism and mystical mountain spirits. So this is the lecture of today. We are very, how can I say, um, now suspenseful to see, of course, what kind of content our lecturer is going to present us. He is uh, lecturing at universities such as uh, Dongguk University, it's a Buddhist um, university, where he's actually lecturing in English about Korean Buddhism. And uh, he's also an author of a book on Korean Buddhism as well as shamanism. And he came to Korea more than 30 years back uh, because he wanted to explore about Korea's culture, spiritualism. Yes, and his name is uh, David A. Mason. Oh, Professor Mason has arrived. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I would like to pass this microphone now to Professor David A. Mason to give us the insight about shamanism and mountain spirit. First of all, if we may just lay the basics, shamanism. It's also called shamanism. Uh, a shaman is the person who does it, also called a shaman. Uh, this is simply a different pronunciation. Shaman and shamanism is usually originally used for what we kind of think of as kind of a basic root form of shamanism, <laughs> shamanism that exists up in Siberia. But they've been heavily studied since they were discovered by ethnographers for a hundred years. So that name, the shaman, um, of the person who does that for their tribe, got used for the entire phenomenon worldwide. And shamanism is something that is worldwide. It's global, first of all. It's really what it is representing there is the most primitive, early kind of what you could call religion or spiritual belief. And uh, what we call the great religions, you know, started arising about 4,000 years ago, replacing that. And by about 2,000 years ago, uh, a lot of shamanism had been converted into paganism, like systems of paganism like the Greeks and the Romans, and started to really be replaced by what we think of as religion. What is shamanism? What, what is this all about, basically? Uh, you got to imagine very primitive people 20,000 years ago, up to 40,000, the, the people making those cave paintings and such, uh, Stone Age people, well, they, they see that things are alive and then things die. So th they start to think that there's something inside of everything is what makes it alive. Everything it starts everything being alive from a seed grows a plant and from uh, sexual activity grows some kind of animal and so it begins and then it flourishes due to a spirit. And when the spirit is strong, it gets bigger and stronger and becomes mature and such. And then the spirit wanes, the spirit gets weaker and the thing dies. And they think of that as the spirit leaving the thing. Uh, bad spirit, good spirits can be on your side and help you. So then there's this idea of appropriating the spirits, asking them 
uh, making offerings to them. This comes on, as far as we know, I don't know, 30,000 years ago. Or... Now, to some extent, this, you know, seeing spirits, hearing, you've heard, you know, some people see ghosts, like in our culture. Some people see ghosts. A lot of people don't, but some people really, they claim that they do. They swear they saw. Um, what is that? Uh, scientists now find that by stim electrical stimulation of some part of the brain, they can get you to see ghosts, pretty much anybody. This is an illusion between your, your optic nerves and some part of your brain, and by taking off a piece of the skull and putting in a little electric probe and going zzz, they can get you to see, and what you see exactly is kind of up to you. It depends on what you've been thinking about. It might be your mother uh, nagging you. It might be King Leopold lecturing you or some movie that you recently saw. Maybe you can see Im images will appear in front of you. Sometimes it seems to us like craziness. I mean, if somebody walk around saying, like, hey, I see spirits. Uh, we, like in America, we hospitalize them. And indeed, this is related to what we call schizophrenia. And a lot of shamanism, there's a spectrum between being what we call normal and, you know, perceive nothing. And there are people who see spirits or hear voices in their head all the time. So shamanism remains here in Korea. It's still going. And to a surprising extent for such a 21st century hyper-modernized society of such high tech and all this, and highly educated, and uh, shamanism remains very strong here. <laughs> this is therapy, and it continues to work for people somehow. It still does. It offers something somehow that Christianity and formal Buddhism and the rest of uh, modern life somehow doesn't give them, and so they keep doing it. Hello, hippies! We are here today to present you our next lecture, and there we can say, Buddhism in Korea. So we have here next to us Professor David A. Mason, the specialist of Korean Buddhism, and he will actually give us now some insight what can we expect on the next lecture on May 30th, 3-0. David, what can we expect during your lecture on Korean Buddhism? I'm going to introduce in this lecture the roots of Korean Buddhism, what makes it fundamentally, characteristically Korean, what's really Korean about Korean Buddhism, how it started in Korea, how it developed in the early centuries to become the kind of things that you're seeing here today. And then, when you are coming, you will maybe also understand why sometimes you hear the word Kwanse Imbosal in a way that says Kwanse Imbosal, Kwanse Imbosal. <laughs> right? Right, that's how they do it. <laughs> Thank you very much. So stay tuned, don't miss a date. May 30th, here at the Yongtong Dosoguan or Yongtong Public Library. The lecture will start at 10 a.m. and end at 1, and you will be fabulously interested by the content of Korean Buddhism. Thank you!